It really started to rain, but first thing we need to do today is we're going to change the oil in the lawnmower. Here's one. Yep, we're going to change the oil in the lawnmower. Right now we're just hiding out in the shed because it's like really, really raining. So here's the mower. Um, it's a Cup Cadet LT42. Uh, we, we bought it used at Home Depot. Uh, somebody returned it. Had like 10 hours on it. And one thing that's kind of always bugged me about it is I think that they bent this wheel because like this thing, never the grass chute never seems to close. I always have to kind of go like that. So we're trying to fix that today also. So we're going to do a service on it, oil change, and then we're going to try to fix that. So I picked this kit up at Tractor Supply. It's like a, it's like a special drain pan. Um, it's just triangle, I guess. Two quarts oil. So it was actually cheaper to buy this than it was just to buy the two quarts oil. Um, and then I got the Kohler filter, which the Cup Cadet filters are way more expensive. And it's just a Kohler filter painted uh, yellow. We got an air filter for it with the sock. And then we got a fuel filter, which I'm not sure if this is the right one, but we'll see. And then in this Cummins case, it's just a, just a grease gun. So we'll grease it. I think it's got some John Deere grease in there. And then this is what came with the mower. There's like a tube in here somewhere. Here it is. For, um, for draining the oil. So the kids are already helping. So I guess the first thing we should do is unhook the battery, and then we'll start working on it. Okay, so we got the battery unhooked. And then to pull the hood, there's just a... Um, there's a connector here for the lights. And then as far as I know, it should just line up in the slot. Yep, it just lines up in the slot and it comes right off. So we'll stick the hood over here. Henry, what are you doing? Um, I'm just wiping it. Checking the oil? That's the old oil, huh? We're checking it. We'll get we'll check it better too when we're done. So first thing we gotta do, watch out, Graham. Is the oil it's like a quick release, it's like a Toolless, but see, it's all dirty from grass, so we need to clean that. See right here? We need to clean this, okay? So let's clean it and get the drain pan set up. Okay, so Henry still has the dipstick out. <clears throat> Henry still has the dipstick out. Okay, so then this is like, I cleaned it. This little cap comes off, and then the, this hose kind of goes on here like this. And then this little triangle drain pan is actually perfect because it fits between the wheel and the mower deck. Okay, don't don't put that there. Okay, now let's, let's see how this works. I think you're supposed to, like, turn and slide or pull. I actually don't really know. Oh, you turn and pull. There we go. Okay, so then let's, uh, it looks like it'll stay. Came with this little piece of hose. So now we just gotta let the oil drain out, okay? Well, the oil's draining out. Um, let's change the air filter and let's try to see if we can bend that wheel back, okay? So one thing I've kind of always done, I don't know if it's from equipment or, we did on trucks and stuff too, but let's put the hours and the date. On the filters, so this is um, has 49, 49.4. Usually I don't do the 0.4, but since the lawnmower, I will. And then today is um, actually I don't know what the date is today. It's 23rd. 4, 23, 22. Usually you initial it, but I'm the only one that's gonna do the oil change on this, so do the same thing here. Okay. Let's try this oil filter. So. I have oil filter pliers, but I'm going to just try to do it by hand because it's probably not that tight. Let's see if it makes a mess. Of course, I say it's not that tight, but it's really tight. Okay, we need some oil filter pliers. Let's get... Okay, come here, Graham. We're back. With oil filter pliers. These are just the ones from Harbor Freight. They seem to work actually pretty well. These ones are a little loose. I haven't used these in a while. Come here, Graham. You want to help? Close this. Close the drain. Okay, you just let that drip. Okay. So then, I don't know how much oil is gonna come. Hey, why don't you come over here? Why don't you come over here? Okay. You can sit down. Okay. 
don't know how much oil is going to come out of here. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot. It may not be much. Let's see. A little bit. Maybe controversial, but I don't put oil Whoa. on this. I had an instructor tell me years ago that if you put too much oil on it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna seal. Mm -hmm. So he said that he never does it. So I've never, never put oil on it. So it's just gonna put a hand tight. No, we don't need those. Hey, that's for taking it off only. Okay. Okay. So let's hand tight, and then let's clean this oil. Hey, no, that's only for for unscrewing it. Okay. We don't use it to put it on. Yeah. Yeah, just leave them right there. You can play with them. Okay, so let's take this guy off and put this on. Yeah, yeah. That worked out pretty well, didn't it? Well, the hose works out good. So we'll, let's clean this hose out. We'll clean all this oil out and everything, okay? We got the air filter. Put the air filter on. Just kind of put on there. There we go. New air filter's on. Let's put the air filter cover on. So this cover just, there's no, there's no, um, there's no screws or anything. It's just, you line up the unlock, and then it's just like a slot, and then you turn it. Okay, so that's on. Okay, let's check out this fuel filter, because I possibly bought the wrong one. I'm not sure. Because the kit that I wanted to get at Tractor Supply, they didn't have for this particular mower. So this is a Briggs & Stratton. 5065 and then see I don't see anything on here I don't see anything on here that would match it but my what I went off of was the the size of this and it looked like it was about that size so this is a gravity fed so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to pinch this off here back here pinch this hose off so we're gonna have fuel going everywhere so Graham's uh, laying the funnels out. So before we change the oil filter, or the fuel filter, excuse me, we're going to put the oil in it. But I got the manual out here, so I'm just going to see. Seems to me it holds two quarts. It came with two, but I want to make sure that it's not like one and a half or something. Okay, so just a couple things. What? You got the fuel filter. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so just a couple things real quick. So the nice thing is Home Depot, if you go to their products, like for mowers, pretty much anything. If you scroll down, you can click like, it's like technical something. And then they have all the manuals that you can just download if it's available. Um, it's just a PDF download. So one thing I wanted to see here is this is the maintenance uh, checklist. So it says engine oil, oil filter, and air filter, and fuel filter at 50 hours, which were at 49.4. And then spark plug is 100 hours. So some kits you buy come with a spark plug. So we're not going to do the spark plug until another uh, 50 hours. So I'm just trying to find the... Um, the oil fill level here. It says um, somewhere in here it says refer to the engine manufacturer for oil capacity. So this has a Kohler 5400 series. So we use the old Google and it holds two quarts. Um, one thing I just want to say is a lot of people get frustrated that this kind of stuff is in here. But the reason that they put that in here is this particular mower could have three different engine options. It could have a Kohler, it could have a Kawasaki, or it could have a Briggs and Stratton. So they're all different oil level so they can't just put it in here that it holds say two quarts because a Kawasaki or a Kohler might be different so a lot of manufacturers do this I know John Deere does that a lot if it's if it's like a different kind of engine like if it's a Yanmar engine it'll say refer to Yanmar whatever but so this one holds two quarts so Graham had the funnels so let's get the oil in it and let's check it okay so we got two quarts in it and then one thing I was always taught years ago, one of my first mechanic jobs, is put the drain plug in, make sure it's tight, and then move the oil pan, the oil drain pan. So you know that you did that because don't ever halfway put the drain plug in. So we got two quarts in, so I don't see any leaks here. So let's pull the funnel out and let's use the so the dipstick on this one, which oh it's over here. Grandma's playing with it. So the dipstick. Is also the fill, the uh, engine oil fill on here. Let's pull this out. So it's going to be a little full because, I don't know if you can see that, you kind of see it. It's going to be a little full because the oil filter is not filled. So what we'll do is we'll change the fuel filter, we'll start it, 
fill the oil filter, and then we'll recheck the oil after. Fuel cap closed, and then I got some vice grips. These ones, yeah, they're not needle nose vice grips, but it's the only thing I got right now. So I'm gonna pinch off this hose, hopefully without damaging it. And then I got some, um, I got some needle nose pliers, if I can get any of these clamps here. And then I got the Milwaukee pick that I'm going to try to pick this out. Let's try this. Let's do the easy side first, I guess. And then there's probably going to be some fuel. But I'm not sure. I think it's the right size. sure it's the right size before we do it oh, so we didn't get not much leaking at all so usually let's see if there's an arrow yeah so see I don't know if you can see that so there's an arrow on it for which way it goes so then it's gonna go whoops it's gonna go this way and then it's kind of like a check valve almost I mean it, it will flow backwards but it just doesn't flow as good backwards but I know like on like a, a loader or something, um, if it has a fuel strainer, it'll, it'll flow um, backwards, it's just not as good. So you can have some fuel pressure problems. Okay, so we get that out of there and then, yeah, so that was the right filter. I mean, it's not the right part number that it was asking for, but it was, it's the right hose size. I think it's hard to get on there. Okay, let's, let's take this off. We might be building up too much pressure. There we go. Now it's on there. Let's fix this clamp here. Careful with that, buddy. Okay, that's all fixed. We didn't spill too much gas at all. Okay, so we need to re reattach the battery. So this was uh, 7 16 so let's just re retest the battery, and then we'll start it up and s All right, so let's check the oil now that we had it running for a minute. So what do we got to do, Henry? got to wipe off the dipstick. Ah, mm, it's hard to tell, but yeah, it's right there, right in the full spot. Okay, so let's make sure there's no leaks. We don't have any fuel leaks. Let's see. No, we don't have any fuel leaks. There's a little bit of oil spilled here, but I think that's from the from when we changed the filter. I don't see any oil leak around the fuel filter. I don't see any oil leak around the oil filter. I think we're good. Okay, let's grease it. Uh, there's two grease circs right here on the steering. I know that. I think there's grease circs. I think there's some in here. I'm not 100% sure. No, that's just a dry, this side at least is just a dry cap. Fix that cap later. Um, this is a dry cap. I don't know if there's any other grease certs. Yep, that's just a dry cap too. So let me check the manual and then let me crawl under here. And make sure there's no grease certs on the axle or anything. I found this, so this is kind of neat. Um, it's a sideways grease end so it goes so here's the one on the gun and the zerk goes in the end but this one let me show you you can slide it you can slide it over like this so for this it wouldn't matter but on sometimes like on like trailer landing gear and stuff you can't get you can't get on it this way and then all I did is I just put a grease zerk in here so that you can use it um, you can use it with this one. So let's get the grease in here. Get this pumped up. There's only two. There's both the steering axles is all that there's one. Okay, so we can just grease this here. Okay, so my mistake. After looking at the manual, there is two more grease circs on the inside of the front wheels. So let's get those greased and then let's check the tire pressure. Okay, so it's the back ones are 10 psi and then we'll see what the front ones are so this is hey stop okay so 
This is what we use, this little Ryobi, it's 18 volt tire inflator. And it actually works pretty well. So 10 PSI, so the back, this one's good. Okay, this one's good. Okay, let's go check the other side. Come on. Let's see what the other side is. I think that they're probably fine. It's just, might as well check it while we're... Oh, thank you. He's got the, the mat. Might as well check it, but they're probably okay. Let's see. Oh, lost a little bit. This one is, this one's nine. So on this one, it'll overshoot it. See, it's 12, okay, no, 10. Okay, perfect. There's two more, yeah, let's see what the front ones are. front ones are 14 PSI. Yeah, so a lot of these people, a lot of people don't like these ends, which they are kind of cheesy, but they'll work. Graham? Oh, this one's low. Okay, so we're gonna take this wheel off. Graham, Graham's got the Royal Impact, hold on, with a Sun X socket. So the inside's 9 16 And then, hey, can you do it? Here, let's see if you can do it. Okay. And the outside is 3 quarter, okay? So hold it on there. And then, no, hold on. It's going the wrong way. Okay, can you hold it? Oh, maybe the swivel socket won't work for you. Okay, can you hold it? Okay, pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, go ahead. Keep going, it slipped off. No, nope. there you go. Good job, good job, Graham, you did it all by yourself. Okay, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to bend this little ear back and then we may, we may trim part of this off. Okay, so we got it a little bit better. Then we're gonna get the wheel back on and then we're gonna mark and we'll just trim the plastic with the multi-tool. Okay, come on, Ram. Can you tighten it? Okay. Okay, can you do it by yourself? We already put the impact in the right way. Hey, hold on. Maybe the swivel socket's too hard. Okay, good job. Okay, so we just marked it with the rams over there trying to, hey. What are you doing? What are you doing? Trying to take off the wheel, but we're not taking that. Just got the multi-tool out. We're just gonna cut, just cut this plastic. So this is a Rockwell. It's the one tool that I have not switched to Ryobi yet, but, and then these are just the Milwaukee. These are wood blades, but they'll cut the plastic, no problem. But don't use them on metal because they'll destroy it. Okay, well, it's, it's better, but it's still not perfect, but it'll work for now. It's a lot better than it was. The wheel's kind of rubbing a little bit, but I think that this bracket is twisted. So we'd have to probably pull the deck and really get in there and fix it. Okay, well, the hood's back on. Uh, all the tire pressure's good. We got it greased. We got the oil changed, fuel filter changed. But don't think we're gonna get to mow the lawn today because it just started raining really bad again. So we'll at least got this done. We'll have to mow the lawn another day. Thanks for the help, Graham. Thanks for the help. I'm also gonna clean up all the tools. Got a big tool mess, and then uh, that's not mine. That's his. Clear up. So we may be able to mow the lawn today. So we kind of use this around the farm too. We have one of those trailers that goes on here, dump trailer. So we use this a lot for moving dirt, moving rocks. Also, obviously mowing the lawn, but then it's super handy for all kinds of other stuff too. I'm um, thinking maybe get like a flat deck trailer or something would be.